In today's video, we're going to be diving into the upcoming pattern, continuing to look at this Arctic pattern, you might call it, in the eastern states that looks to at least last into the first week of June. <clears throat> there is a little glimmer of hope that this might begin to break up at some point, like the 3rd, 4th, 5th, 6th of June, somewhere in there. But in recent model runs, as yesterday and the day before, what we've seen is that most of these model runs are trending at it continuing through that time frame. Today is really the first day that we're seeing this pop up. So we're going to take it with a grain of salt, that kind of flip over. But I'm definitely hoping for it. And I know that some of you are as well. Some of you are actually cheering for this colder weather, uh, which I don't judge. But a little interesting for early June. I live near the beach, so maybe that is what it is. Um, you know, really not enjoyable to go to the beach when it's 65. But uh, yeah, I could understand if you're more inland, not really wanting that as much. Uh, interestingly enough as well, severe weather is going to be pretty rampant throughout the south, central, and southeastern states. We've been talking about that uh, even before uh, we really knew where there would be severe weather. This type of pattern where we get the ridge in the west, trough in the east, tends to just bring these storm systems along that jet stream through this area. And that can lead towards a lot, daily emojis, there we go, a lot more activity in these areas overall. So we're going to be watching for that as well during the upcoming pattern. And this is actually for today uh, on Saturday, the 24th. And uh, we can see again this warm air mass really taking hold there along the western seaboard. A lot of cooler conditions here for the Rockies eastward there in the northern states. We see a lot of cooler air. And then there is some warmth here along that immediate uh, deep south Gulf Coast area. We can see that the cold air and the warm air get really, really close together in these regions. And we know when cold air and warm air mixes, that can cause a lot of thunderstorm and severe weather activity. So that is a big piece of the puzzle here as to why we're seeing so much activity in this region. As we keep going towards Sunday, uh, we see the same thing essentially. Very warm along that western corridor. We call that a positive PNA. Cooler temperatures throughout the north, central, northeastern states, and that does stretch a little bit into the south. But again, areas closer to the Gulf remain warm compared to normal here. For Monday on actual Memorial Day, still very cool. Uh, Tuesday here on the 27th, not much has changed. This cold is advancing further and further south through the deep south, as you can see. Uh, that's the only real difference I can kind of point out. Wednesday the 28th, no big change. Thursday the 29th, there's a little bit of warmer temperatures along the immediate east, but uh, that really quickly gets smashed by Friday the 30th. Saturday the 31st, that warm air is getting more intense, but we can see that it is expanding eastward, which sometimes when these positive PNAs break up, they just start to expand eastward, like we're seeing here. And then you'll start to see colder air developing along that western seaboard, and they kind of just transition from west to east. We'll see if that's what occurs here. By Sunday, we see some in the northwest, some cooler temperatures moving in. Maybe this is uh, the beginning of the end. Monday the 2nd, Tuesday the 3rd. Eh, I don't know. We see some warmer conditions in the east, but it is separate from that western warm area. And we see a pattern that hold, takes hold here, ridge on the west coast, trough in the central, and then more of a ridge along the east as well. Uh, pretty interesting. I've seen this pattern take place uh, before. A lot of times during the winter we'll see this where it's like a southeast ridge, cold in the central states, and then also a positive PNA in the west. Uh, so I would say this is plausible, but 306 hours out, um, again, is, is in the long range. And this is the first model run where we're seeing this trend of it you know, maybe not an end of the positive PNA, but at least an end of the immediate eastern states dealing with the cold. Uh, again, some point between the 4th and 8th there, uh, but there is a lot of suggestions that would lead us to believe that this could last a whole lot longer than that. Uh, looking at the CAPE, we looked at this yesterday as well, convective available potential energy. The main thing I want to show you here is that how this just stays further to, towards this deep south area as well, south central and southeast. Again, CAPE stands for Convective Available Potential Energy, and it's really just thunderstorm fuel. Uh, it's a calculation between humidity and temperatures to kind of give the potential for thunderstorm development. So the higher this number, the more potential for thunderstorm development there is. And if we see the whites, there's none. So really relatively no chance of thunderstorm development. And, you know, just a couple weeks ago, we saw this stretching throughout almost all of the eastern and central United States. And now it's just this little sliver of these southern areas we're seeing. 
and it kind of stays that way for a while we can tell that there's a huge arctic and dry influence that's really preventing this from stretching very far northward at all but these areas towards the deeper south do see elevated amounts of this as it's kind of just bottled up down there and it can't escape so we see that go on for days and days and days this is all the way by the 29th we've just continued to see this over the same area and it gets completely thrown out by june 1st i mean not even the gulf coast has any but then look at this we get this resurgence fifth sixth seventh and it does kind of rebound to what we saw earlier in the month of may by june 8th here uh, we're seeing this well up into the midwest ohio valley mid-atlantic even some of new england so this does rebound really really good with the same time frame that this model is currently showing a little bit of warm air working its way back in so uh interesting to say the least looking at the total like storms overall uh, we do see these thunderstorms just continuing to flare up in the areas dealing with the higher cape so we are going to deal with this for days and days and days on end here just daily thunderstorms throughout this corridor that's for uh sunday here's for memorial day here's for tuesday and we can see again thunderstorm development down in these areas likely not thunderstorms up here likely this is just showery activity because we know there's little to no cape cold temperatures and it's relatively dry uh humidity wise it's it's quite dry uh as we keep going we do see a lot of the east just dealing with precipitation overall but we get another uh pretty rich thunderstorm event here friday the 30th dealing with some thunderstorms in this corridor uh, we see that becomes a nor'easter eventually off of north carolina and virginia we're dealing with heavier rainfall some wind in there uh, right as we're reaching friday the 30th into the saturday the 31st we get another nor'easter trying to develop this one's very weak but around june 1st and yeah then we get this kind of crossing the nation storm by the fourth which this is what we've dealt with throughout a lot of april and may and this is a little bit more standard for this time of year stronger low somewhere in this area warm front is beginning to take hold and then we get this cold front this would lead towards quite a big risk of severe weather so maybe this is our next severe weather event to really really watch for this is approximately 10 or 11 days out so definitely take it with a grain of salt but if there's any truth to this this could be our next more major and more impactful severe weather event that we have on the way definitely watching for that very very closely wednesday the fourth this is just continuing to move eastward thursday the fifth and then by friday the sixth we see this arriving for some of the east and after it's said and done we get this resurgence of just very rampant thunderstorm activity basically anywhere east of the rockies and anywhere south of the canadian border we are seeing chances of thunderstorms here as we work our way into june which if you know it really makes sense that is what we typically see in june this pattern that we're seeing outside of this little glimmer of hope that we've been talking about is very abnormal there's probably going to be some temperature records broken uh it is pretty severe cold for this time of year typically you don't see arctic blasts especially not long-lived ones in late may early june but that is what we have on the way here super super interesting and again nothing like i've ever seen really uh looking at the total precipitation we've been talking about this for a couple of days as well but this is really the area to watch is this more south central and southeastern area uh, a little drier in the west these positive pna patterns tend to bring higher pressure and really cause the storms to deflect around this area whether it's to the south or north but they deflect away from that positive pna area so very dry in there and a little bit more active especially the further south you go in the eastern two-thirds of the nation the anomalies sure enough mostly below normal for the west here mostly below normal actually as you work your way towards the canadian border as well and then far above normal for a lot of these rockies plains deep south areas this is all of these areas we're watching for above average precipitation and pretty considerably above average precipitation uh, i might add as well so really really interesting rich moisture for these deep south areas i definitely can't wait for this pattern to break up it's quite boring it's quite cold uh very unseasonable and overall i'm wishing for this to to break up as soon as possible this colder pattern in may and june to me feels like a warmer pattern in october november december like we've dealt with not last year last year was phenomenal temperature wise winter in the winter time but 
for the multiple winners before that, uh, it was it was a struggle like that. So I feel exactly the same way. I want things to be seasonable overall or actually more extreme um, as far as what the, the current season would typically be. So again, for late late spring, early summer, I want things to be normal, if not even hotter than what's normal. In the winter, I want things to be normal, if not colder than what's normal. Let me know what you guys think, though, in the comments. I want to know what you guys typically cheer for weather-wise. With all that being said, be sure to subscribe. We upload every single day. You can even hit the bell icon for daily notifications when we upload, so you never miss one. Be sure to like the video if you did enjoy it. Leave a comment down below, and I'll see you guys in the next video.